my name is Judith. I am one half of the Nutty Nitty Sisters. Together with my sister Julie, we create videos sharing our love of all things fibery and the fiber arts. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and checking out our videos. This is the second video in a series of videos about a breed study that I'm doing. Um, this breed study is made possible by Maine Fiber Workshop Breed Study at mainefiberworkshop.com. So I purchase a monthly subscription from Kendra at Maine Fiber Workshop and she sends a lovely package of scrumptious fiber for me to check out. And um, you can certainly join the fun at mainefiberworkshop.com and just click on the breed study link. Last month we did a long fiber. I have yet to complete my pillow, but I will put a thing here in the corner somewhere um, of that video so you can check it out. This month I am doing teas water. We are spinning teas water together. Um, so again, Kendra sends a little card that has all of the information about teas water. I do a little additional research. I check some things out online. I also have my fiber source book, um, my field guide that I, I check out and also kind of look at, um, a couple of spinning books that I have to understand what the best way to spin this fiber is. Last month I had a project in mind that I tried to spin for and I ended up not having enough yardage. Um, I still was able to do a beautiful partial um, pillow that I'm working on completing. But this month I want to spin the yarn first and then find a project for it. I think that makes more sense, right? Um, so this is the fiber. I have already spun quite a bit of it, um, but again, it is tease water. It is a very, um, here, I'll get a piece here. So here is the braid that I, I get two of these braids. You can decide whether you want four or eight ounces. I do the eight ounce, so two braid option. And um, this is the beautiful tease water fiber. It is a very shiny fiber, um, extremely long staple length. So on Kendra's card here, um, she's indicated it is uh, originates in the U in the United Kingdom. The color is a warm white. It is a six inch staple length when sheared twice a year. The micron count is 30 to 36. So it's a long wool with luster. It does not felt very well. It's suitable for a low twist yarn due to the staple length. It's a durable yarn, good for weaving. It has a nice drape when it's knit and it's used as a sire for Mashems, the Masham breed. So again, here is a little wisp of the fiber on my little um, sample card. And then this is what I've actually spun up. This is kind of what I'm going for. I'm looking at like a lace weight. Um, it's such a nice shiny fiber. I think a really sort of loosely spun lace weight yarn would make a gorgeous open lace work shawl. Um, I also did a little additional research and I found that um, the Teeswater breed is completely Kemp free, a lot like the Lonk. They've been in Teesdale, England for over 200 years. They're actually bred as a meat sheep, um, but they also obviously have lovely locks. Um, the way that their uh, wool comes is very um, spirally, like almost like dreadlocks on them. I love the little like almost dreadlock look that they have. It really is a fun looking animal. And they are very docile. They have a great temperament. They're very hardy built. Um, their fleeces weigh between 10 to 15 pounds um, for a yearling first cut. Um, the rams are between 250 and 300 pounds. The ewes are between 150 to 100 pounds. And the lambs are born at about 10 to 13 pounds. The Tees Water Ram, when mated with a hill ewe, you would get a Masham 
highly maternal you. So I thought that was very interesting that they have found that the combination of a Teasdale Ram and a Hill U will bring a very docile, very maternal um, mommy sheep. So that's pretty neat. Um, in 1997 was the first import to the United States of the Teeswater sheep. They are very interesting sheep. I would love to see one in person that, again, those like those, that locky fleece just looks so cool. I have spun Teeswater before, but I've spun just the locks. Um, I did a um, a scarf with some thick and thin yarn where I locked the locks into the scarf. Um, and I do believe that was a tease water, um, a tease water lock. So I haven't actually spun it um, as a yarn. And I'm very, very pleased with how this is coming out. Again, it's just, it's got some halo to it. The shine, the shine is incredible, but the light is very bright. So um, the way that I am preparing this, because this is a very thick braid, um, the way that I'm doing this is I am, I have gone back to my stripping method. This is such a nice, um, long wool and it's not very toothy, so it doesn't grab very well. Um, which doesn't make, to me, it doesn't make it very easy to pre-draft it. Um, so I actually stripped it into thinner sections to spin this. Um, just to make it a little easier to draft into a very, very thin um, lace weight yarn. I originally thought I would spin from the fold, but I found that the yarn was a bit too puffy. Um, and I really want a nice, sleek, lustrous um, lace weight yarn. So I'm going to do from these smaller strips of the fiber and see what we get. So... I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you on the other side. Bye. pop in real quick and share with you the first bobbin that is done from the Tease Water fiber I'm spinning this month. And here it is. It's so super pretty. Let's see if we can get it to, to focus. Ooh, that's dark. It's so shiny and so bright that it makes, the lights make it just blow out. Um, but it is so fun to spin. It is um, nice long staple length so you can really get a good rhythm going with it. Um, it's just, it's absolutely lovely. It's a, a bit grippy but also a little slippery, um, if that makes sense. Like you can feel that it's got some tooth to it but um, because of the luster it just, it kind of glides. It's just very, very nice. Um, so my singles are coming out. You can see here, they are, oh, if I can get it in there. They are a wee bit bigger than 
the 20 wraps per inch. They are, it is just about spot on on the 30. Um, it's definitely too big to be 45. So I think it might be about 28 wraps per inch. Um, and if that's the case, then once I ply these together, it will come out to about 18 or 19 wraps per inch. Technically, a lace weight is 20 plus, so it'll be just a little bit under lace weight. We'll see. The other bobbin is coming out fairly similar, but I think I might, I think I might have gotten thicker on it. I'm not really sure. So um, my goal is to try to get a lace weight two ply yarn out of it. Um, if not, it'll be like a very light fingering and we'll see what we get out of it. So um, I didn't capture a whole lot of video of the spinning of this one. So I'll try to capture more of the next one. And the weather here has started to turn a little bit cooler. The trees are definitely changing their colors. It's really starting to feel very fallish. Um, we are going to be buttoning up the camper this weekend and getting it all winterized and shut down, which is so sad. But um, yeah, it's definitely getting fall fever around here and I absolutely love it. And that gives me more time for spinning. <laughs> um, so I will see you on the other side of the other bobbin. Again, it is currently November 3rd. I'm quite delayed in getting my Tease Water Fiber done. I actually have not even begun my October fiber, um, but it was a rough October. Um, I had a shoulder injury, so I didn't get to spin a whole lot, nor knit, which was excruciating. <laughs> but I did manage to finish the Tease Water and it came out so lovely. Look at that beautiful, beautiful skein. Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh, look at it. <laughs> I am utterly in love. This has so much shine. Um, so this is eight ounces. It's drapey beyond belief. Um, it actually came out because I, I do a little sampling and I also save a little bit of the fiber for spinning in another project later um, in the year. So this was 214 grams is how much this little yarn baby weighs. And it came out at a whopping 5,775 yards or 5,281 meters. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, I think it's about um, 
19 wraps per inch. Um, I measured in a couple of different places and I came up with 19 in a few and 20 in another. So it is definitely, I'm calling it a lace weight. Um, but yeah, it is so stinking pretty. Let me, let me pull a few of these. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so, so pretty. I love it. Um, so I have found a pattern to make with it. I am going to do a really lacy um, circular shawl. It's called Wedding Peacock by M. Mario um, on Ravelry. And I think it's going to be perfect for that. I'm so excited. It came out so great. The fiber was amazing to spin. Um, after it was washed and it was hanging to dry, you can actually see how the crimp kind of stayed in some of the fiber. I mean, it's just, it's so pretty. I think um, next, second only to the birth of my children, this is probably the proudest um, thing I have ever made. <laughs> um, it is just absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, it was so fun to spin, so easy to spin. I did spin it on the um, Eowil 6, uh, the electric spinner, um, because I did want it to be very thin and I wanted it to be very consistent. And I find that on the E spinner, I'm able to accomplish that nice thin, um, that thin yarn. Um, more consistently with the e-spinner and not having to worry about the treadling. Um, I also thought it was going to come out a little bit better, a uh, little bit tighter twist angle, um, but the twist angle didn't come out quite as tight as I expected, um, but it's still a lovely, um, I, I love the twist angle. I love um, everything about it. It's perfect and it's so squishy and soft. Um, it's not as soft as like a merino. It feels like it's a little sturdier than merino because of the longer staple length. Um, I think with the merino, you've got such a small staple length. It, um, you know, has a tendency to to fuzz up and felt a little, uh, to fuzz up and pill a little bit. Whereas this is a nice long staple length, but it still has great halo. Not an overabundance of halo like you'd get from a. Um, from like a, a mohair, but I, I just think it's gonna make a beautiful, beautiful shawl. This beautiful shawl is like, um, it looks like lace on a wedding dress. It's beautiful. So that's the plan for that. I do have the October fiber and I've um, already received and paid for my bill for the November fiber. So I've got to get to spinning. Um, sneak peek at the next breed study. This is the fiber. It's beautiful and white and it's Cormo. So I can't wait to dig into that and do some research and learn all about Cormo. So thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying this series, I am enjoying producing it for you and playing with all the fiber. Um, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and if you would like to join me in this breed study, you can join anytime um, at Maine Fiber Workshop. There is her card, and um, you receive a monthly invoice, and you can um, you know, you can cancel and begin anytime. Um, so yeah. Um, join the fun. It's so much fun. I love it. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.